for sure. You know what's massive is uh, is esports. I'm working at a company called Picklebet, and they're an esports gambling company. And the mm. amount of gambling that goes on in esports, and then also how is big it, it like, actually like fantasy football and shit. Or no, or... no, like people people playing FIFA or people playing CS:GO, um, 2K. You know, and and oh, shit. video games and shit. Competitive video games, like that's the I reckon that's the next post sports boom. Like people are really tuned. It's massive in like Asia. Um, it's big in the US. Oh, yeah, yeah. I went to a, I went to a convention in Melbourne for work. It's called DreamHack, and it's just like it's crazy how it's still like in that kind of nerd phase where it's kind of, but it's it is a big industry. Um, and that's yeah, like it's. I think that's probably. After after sports, that's the next thing. Do you see like guys losing fucking their ass in the e esports and shit? Like playing, like they, they just have a bad day on the fucking Nintendo or the fucking PlayStation, whatever. Uh, uh, as in, like the players or people betting? Like the people, like oh, so people are betting on the players. These aren't guys. Yeah, people are betting. People are betting on games. Yeah. No, sh- okay. I thought it was like the players who are like playing a game of like chess, like not chess, but like poker or something. But they're playing a video game instead of cards. No, like, no. Oh, so, so like you, you're a, you're an individual that plays FIFA, yeah, and you're versus right. another individual that plays FIFA. You got some funny like gamer tag name, and you're versus this guy. Mm. Competitive league, you get paid big in Europe too, yeah. and people are betting on the outcome of your game. That's some fucking what, like, bro, and like, like in a, like <laughs> massive amount, like not like it. It turns over like money, bro. I I want to meet someone who fucking gambles <laughs> fucking video games and be like, man, you need to get, <laughs> you need yeah. to get a PlayStation, bro. <laughs> Pe- mate, people will bet on anything these days. That's some fucking wild shit, man. I like I, but that's the thing, like the gambling stuff, like I. I never understood how people can get addicted to gambling. I'm not sort of bagging it or anything, but like, mm. and I, I go into like a pokey pokies or whatever it is, put 50 bucks mm. in. If I lose, I'm like, oh, oh, cool. I've lost 50 bucks, whatever. No harm, no foul. If I win, I go great, whatever. But like, you know what I mean? I don't understand how, the appeal, how people can get hooked on something where it's like, yeah, I agree with you. It. It's like there's a point where it goes from like being entertainment to probably being a problem. I've worked for two betting companies um, just in like marketing and just yeah, maybe uh, like I had one entry level role where I was taking yeah. bets bets at um, at a race course. And you, you see all different walks of life, but it's definitely it's like any it's like anything like alcohol. It's, it does have addictive tendencies like you get addicted to the feeling of winning and you're talking to someone oh, that's a like a big, not not a big gambler, but that's you know my biggest bet was uh, betting on the uh, U.S. election one year, and I thought it was a guarantee. Like I'm cleaning up here, yeah. and then Donald Trump lost. <laughs> and then how much did you lay down on the bet? I had about thirty grand on Donald on the Don. I thought there was no way that you that Joe Biden that was geez. losing. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was it was like it was a build up over like the year. It was like a contest between not contest, but like. All my mates and uh, a few other people were like, yeah, there's no chance that this bloke's winning. Like, Trump's two bucks. And he kept blowing out further and further. I was like, this is just like an investment, you know? And it just kind of got out of hand. But, like, it's it's easy. It's easy. Like, I I think it's easy for people to get addicted to that feeling of winning. And your bet sizes slowly start to increase and increase. But, yeah, no, it's um, it's definitely not the, uh, the most moral industry. Jeez, I'm still sitting here just going 30 grand on Donald Trump, bro. Fuck. Stupid. Very stupid. If I have my time again, uh, uh, there was a point where he was winning and I could have hedged my bet. And I thought like I was, I was like, I don't know, hedge my bet. Like it's, I've won. You know, it was like, he was like, he came into like a dollar 10. And I was like, one of my, my uncle was there and, and a mate had called me. He's like, you probably want to hedge. I was like, bro, the thing's over. I was, I was go to sleep, wake up the next morning. Oh, and uh, he was he was losing. I was like, oh, geez. But I don't know. Norm Macdonald, uh, he's a famous comedian. I know. I've heard him. Um, he was a chronic gambler. And he would always make jokes about how, you know, every he goes, sometimes he would, um, 
or there was this iconic story about him once he he won massive at a casino or something like that and he threw it away and he was like i'm just gonna lose it he like he threw it in the ocean no shit yeah 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 he was a big big poker player um and loved betting on sports from me watching the norm mcdonald show but like it's it's funny because it's uh my my brothers love it like we bet on like you know rugby league and different sports but yeah no to a point where now it doesn't get out of hand the the, the donald trump was an anomaly and it was uh we, we were looking at it as an investment and it was a bad one that's insane you know i i heard from somewhere i can't remember where i heard this story from but years ago i think it was like in the 70s or 80s Kerry packer was in a casino and there was this Texas guy at the table he was at, and he was going, oh, you know, my ranch is worth $100 million and blah, 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 <clears throat> and just kept on going on, and Kerry Packer just turned around and just went, okay, no worries, here's the coin, heads or tails for your $100 million. The guy's like, what? He goes, I'll put $100 million on the table right now. What do you choose, heads or tails? And the, nah. this, like, the loud mouth, this loud mouth guy just looked at him and went, uh, what? Excuse me? And he's, and the guy just quickly just backed. The fuck away from Kerry <laughs> Mate, yeah, no. I, I don't know. There's something about gambling or uh, people that are ultra wealthy, like loaded, and yeah. like them being risk takers and, uh, and, and fun, like funny, like crazy gambling stories. I don't know. I feel like that, that, that's a thing. Cause I mean, if you get to that level of wealth, you got to be willing to like, roll the dice here and there. Yeah, yeah. Like I've got a few mates that like will sit there and go, "Oh yeah, I'm just gonna stop past the pub and have a beer and play the poker keys before I go home." I'm like, "Really? You have to stop and at the pub?" Yeah, I couldn't do that. I couldn't. I, I don't think I'm that much of a junkie, but I mean, like um, yeah. the uh, I, I never got I, I never kind of got around the pokies. I feel like it's mind numbing. My grandmother, on the other hand, she loves it, but I mean, like uh, I, I can't. Um, I'd rather bet on sports or something to watch. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I, I like I years ago when I used to be really into like UFC and stuff, like I bet on like UFC fights and shit like that. And I actually was spewing because like you remember the fight Ronda Rousey got knocked the Lost. fuck out, yeah, yeah, by Holy Home. yeah, yeah. by Holly Home. I was gonna put money. I was in line to put money for Holly Home to win via knockout because it was just a ridiculous <laughs> bet, and it was like. In the, I think it was in the first round as well as the second round. I like, I picked the round and everything, and I was with my wife, and she was like, "Did you put the bet?" I said, "Nah, it's probably better." You know, I was gonna put like fifty <laughs> bucks or some shit, and it was like paying like, fuck. I think it was like a couple of grand, so it was something not thirty grand, but it was something decent in return. But I, yeah, I missed that bet. My wife's like, never let me live that one down. Uh, you win some, you lose some, mate. You're telling me you've never, you've never taken a bet because you can bet on wrestling. Sports better taking bets on wrestling now. It's big in the UK, US. You can bet. I know it's a fixed outcome. Yeah. But you know, you can you can kind of get a look. You don't even have to look at the dirt sheets anymore. You can see who's favourite to win the next Royal Rumble. I know, bro. I think that's next level of marks. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I've I've seen the gambling on the wrestling and shit like that. And it's like, yeah. Thirteen dollars ten for the Undertaker. <laughs> your return. Yeah, like, man. If I worked in WWE or knew someone, I'd be like, "Hey, man, who's going over in?" The match? Oh like, yeah, but I think betting companies are they're, they're like not smart to it, but they would never take a massive bet on it. They would just limit. They limit their liability, and they'd be like, "Yeah, they take like a, you know maybe five hundred bucks max on it on." you know, the rock to come back and win the Royal Rumble. <laughs> oh, really? So like, do they, have, yeah, they'd have to have some sort of like, yeah, yeah. They, 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 that's how, that's how a lot of people that work at gambling companies know the result of something. Cause if they see a lot of money coming in for like the bachelorette or something, yeah. they know who's winning because obviously the person that's won has gone and told them, yeah, I've won or like who's finished top three. And they'll be like, yeah, jam, jam me for top three. And then you kind of get a gist of, Who's who finishes higher or um, who wins? 